Hello rogues and welcome back to a particularly freaky episode of Rogue Hobbies where for the first time ever we are opening up the Warhammer confessional booth. Recently I had the amazing idea to head on off to the internet and ask the general Warhammer public to anonymously share with me their weirdest Warhammer stories, their darkest secrets and their strangest confessions. And also invite them to maybe get some stuff off their chest because we all need that sometimes right? I set up a link where people could anonymously send me their confessions and once I invited them to do so the messages started flooding in and now we have to read them all. <laughs> And if you like this video, then maybe we can do another one again sometime. So let me know in the comments section. And also if you're feeling brave, go ahead and pop your own strange story or confession down in the comments section too, so we can all judge and or support you in this trying time. And maybe your confession will end up in one of my videos in the future. Also, before we get started, I wanna make it super clear that I love Warhammer and I love the Warhammer community. This video is in no way a, haha, let's laugh at the Warhammer people, They're all freaks. No, no, no. Trust me, every single fandom, both on and off the internet, has their fair share of strangeness and strange people, and Warhammer's no different. And I really appreciate everyone who sent me their messages and their confessions and their stories, so we could all have a good time in this video today. Anyways, that's it. That's, that's the idea for the video. I've got all the messages here. There is a lot of them, and we are going to read them right now, out loud for the whole internet to see. So let's go. <laughs> okay, let me start with this one that I got over on Instagram. So I know who this person is, but for the video, of course, anonymously, I'm just gonna take out their name. You'll never know. <laughs> Caught my opponent cheating at a GT by flipping ones over on his dice tray, thinking I wouldn't see them because they were on the wall of the dice tray closest to me and I couldn't see. I didn't confront him about it because I was already up by 30 points on turn four. Instead, I had my buddy, who has rancid gas, crop dust him for the entirety of the next round and we also warned his next opponent. I kind of love that. I kind of, like, that's a bit of a boss move. <laughs> like, okay, does anyone know what crop dusting is? Because I think I do. Let me explain crop dusting. I think it's just, I think it's just when you like stealth fart on someone. Is it? Is it just when you stealth fart someone? Because like, that's a boss move, I think. <laughs> Like, I kind of get it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be that guy. I, I would rather elaborately set up a stealth fart mission with my friend than call out someone for cheating. Like, I'd rather someone smelled the inside of my friend's hole than confront them for cheating. And also, good job for warning your next opponents or his next opponents. Like, that's super fair. I think, I don't know, are we gonna start rating them? I give that an eight out of 10. I think that's fair. I think you did good there. Well, well done, good job. <laughs> I have a confession for you. I recently started back in the hobby partially due to COVID. When I had quit a couple of decades ago, I had given my collection to a friend of mine. When I asked him if he still had one of my armies, he vehemently denied it. It became a running joke amongst our friends of me always asking about this. Oh no, I think I see where this is going, oh no. Then about a week ago, I noticed an old box of Warhammer 40k was a bit heavier than it should have been. I opened it, and under the templates and sprue was the army I was looking for. I had it all along, and I still haven't told him yet. Bruh. <laughs> is this, is this the way you're telling him? Okay, do I have to like, is this the way people are gonna start confessing things to their friends? Let's do it, hello. Hey buddy, if you're watching this, and your friend has been giving you a hard time about you having his army, it's fine. He's got it. Everything's cool. You don't even need to talk to him. I'll talk, I'll talk to him. I'll say, hey, it's cool. You know, I, it, he's fine. We're all fine. Let's just forget about it. If he turns up, if he turns up at your local gaming store with the army, worry about it. He's, he's a good guy. I think he's a good guy. I don't know. I don't know what I do in this situation. I probably wouldn't say anything either, but if it takes me to have to tell him, I'm okay with that. I'll do that for you. It's cool, we're buds. <laughs> 
Okay, I quite like this one. I've just read it and I think it's quite sweet. So I'm gonna read this one next. At the age of 40, I still play with the minis after I'm one, done gluing and two, done painting. I put them up on the battlefield, line them up and play out a scenario in my head as I did when I first got introduced to Warhammer as a 12 year old. I feel super ashamed and dumb if my wife catches me. Are you playing with them? No, 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 I'm just lining them up to see if the color schemes would look good. <laughs> No need for anonymity, I'll own it. I'll still keep it anonymous, I think, because I said I would. But no, you absolutely should not feel ashamed of yourself. I love that. I honestly kind of do the same with my Warhammer. I will still speak to them and as I'm painting them, I will make up little scenarios about like where they're from and who they are and like who the war boss is. And that's how like homebrew starts. I think, I think your imagination is fantastic. You shouldn't be ashamed. And maybe your wife is asking because maybe she wants to join in too. Have you considered that? Like maybe she's like, oh, are you, what are you doing in there? Can, can I play? with your Warhammer too, and maybe that would be fun for both of you to, to play Warhammer together. But no, I wouldn't be ashamed. I would, I would embrace that because I think it will make you a happier person and maybe will make your relationship with Warhammer just a little bit more whimsical and fun. Don't be ashamed. Okay, this one's, this one's fantastic. I, this one's great. Entirely lame, but I once went through the bother of a sub-assembly on a 40k tank to paint a confession of love for an unrequited crush on the inside as graffiti, and then glue it shut like sealing a pharaoh's tomb in the hopes of containing the curse. Oh buddy, <laughs> did it work? Like, <laughs> I don't know, is that healthy? That feels like a therapy method. There's this therapy method where you like, write your worry on a rock and then you throw it into the sea. And I feel, I feel like that's healthier. I don't know, because like, I would be so scared that some someone is gonna crack that tank open and then they're it's just gonna all come, it's like Pandora's box, right? Someone's gonna, someone's gonna crack that bad boy open. You're gonna drop it on the ground and then it's gonna be like, and then what are you gonna do? I don't know, I would feel uncomfortable knowing it was in there. I'm not saying be the old lady in the Titanic and just drop your tank into the ocean and forget all about your crush. Don't do that. Just, I hope it worked for you. I hope you feel better. And I think that's really cute actually. I think that's quite a sweet confession. So thank you. When I was younger, we used to go to the Games Workshop store every Saturday. We'd play games and get hyper on Coca-Cola. The store manager and my pal designed the oddest snack we ate all the time. Krispy Kremes. Pasta shells filled with whipped cream. Yup, those were the days. So like, I have a few questions. First of all, that's a great story. I, I love that so much, that's adorable. But my second thing, so Krispy Kreme. I'm a woman that likes a recipe. I like cooking and I am, I am intrigued by Krispy Kremes. Because when I, when I hear the word crispy in pasta shells, what I think of is those pasta shells are not cooked. If it was cooked pasta, I think that would be fine. But I don't know, I don't know if I recommend eating raw pasta shells with whipped cream. But like, it's still, it's still cute. I like it, that's very wholesome. <laughs> I recently played some Horus Heresy against a Mechanicum player, and due to a combination of circumstances, the game went very, very poorly for him. By turn three, he reached for a tech thrall of his and, calm as can be, put it in his mouth, chewed it up, swallowed it, and then boxed up his army and left. Oh my god, he ate his thrall. <laughs> What do you do in that situation? How how do you recover from that as a player? Did he did he did he sw you said he swallowed it, right? Wait, no, he didn't. He swallowed it. You he lit how? Did he like wash it down with something? How do you emotionally get over that? You should introduce him to the Krispy Kreme people. They probably have like the same need for impossibly sharp and crunchy textures. Just get them at that store, then everyone would get along. Okay, so this one's quite sad and I wanna talk about it because I think it's, it's quite important and I think a lot of people are gonna relate to it. I tell people that I don't like playing war games because it's too complicated, so I just stick to painting. That's relatable, but there's, there's more. 
Truth is, I don't play because I don't have many friends, and the ones I have would absolutely rip me apart if they heard about me playing. I'm old and still terrified of this kind of bullying. I say this all the time, but Warhammer, if you're talking about Warhammer, maybe you're talking about other war games. Warhammer has really come along in recent years, especially in the last 10 years. It's no longer really seen as like the weird little nerd hobby and people are way more accepting of just people being nerds in general these days, which is fantastic for everyone. If you've got friends who are ripping you apart for enjoying something you genuinely love, maybe it's worth having like a real frank conversation with them or with yourself about like who are your friends because if I was too scared to be open about something I enjoyed with my friends unless it was something harmful or something like that I don't know I don't know I, I think I'd feel I feel sad so I really feel for you buddy anonymous buddy I hope things get better for you but concerning the first part of the um, confession which was like I'm intimidated to play games because it confuses me me too I used to be really scared to play games because I I have dyscalculia which makes it really hard for me to like remember numbers so you can imagine how in intimidating and hard it is for me to play a single round of Warhammer 40k. I used to play at my local and people would be like, why haven't you read the codex? Why didn't you read your codex before you started playing? And that really hurt me because I could read that codex a thousand times and nothing would ever go into my head. And I think painting for me is a safe way for me to engage in Warhammer without being scared of messing up and potentially making someone else's game really bad. But I absolutely guarantee that there are people out there who will be more than happy to walk you through tons of games of Warhammer to, until you get it or until you're at a pace where you feel comfortable. So don't be scared to talk to the Warhammer community, don't be scared to make those friends online and discover these places where you can be more open about your hobby. Every Warhammer army that I've started to impress a woman has outlasted my bromance with her. Are we starting armies to impress women now? See, this is what I mean. Warhammer's cool now. This guy's just out there trying to riz girls with Warhammer armies. Like, oh, uh, hey babe, I heard you like sea elves. Have you seen my Ideneth? Army, the worst case scenario in this scenario is that you've painted a ton of armies and you've just not managed to raise a woman yet in which case you just have loads of armies so everyone's winning apart from maybe the women and you <laughs> but you've got loads of armies so uh, <laughs> neutral i guess I started a rumor based on absolutely nothing about an upcoming release for Blood Bowl and now practically the entire community believes it oh my god what? What rumor? I haven't seen any Blood Bowl rumors recently. What was it? Either way, it's like that meme where like someone on Twitter posts something and someone will go, what, what was your source for this? And they're like, I just made it up. You were literally that guy. How does it feel? Do you feel powerful just going on the internet and telling lies? Because I don't know, I would. But also I really want to know what the rumor is. So I guess I'm going to go Google some Blood Bowl rumors now. Thanks. <laughs> I bought the Plague Marine Champion only for the sassy Nurgling. I don't think that counts as a confession. I think everyone buys that kit just for the sassy Nurgling. We can move on. I wanted to win a painting contest at my local shop, so I went and hired a pro painter. I won, but it's not my proudest moment. Oh buddy. I get that you're confessing this and I really appreciate that and I hope I hope you feel better about it for coming clean but I just I can't understand that mindset so I understand wanting to win things that's super relatable but I don't understand the mindset in which you win by cheating because surely you feel double bad about it at the end because you don't technically win you get the prize but in your head you know that someone else should have got it or you shouldn't have technically got it so at the end it's like don't you feel worse and again i appreciate the confession but maybe this should be a warning story to other people if you are tempted to do this kind of thing don't do it because then you'll end up having to confess to some random on the internet years later and you won't be able to sleep at night but hopefully now they have a little bit more peace of mind so thank you very much for your confession 
A girl I like passed comment on a model I painted and said she really liked it. I painted up a full army in those colours and style. It turns out she's totally colourblind and married. At least I finished an army. You should be friends with the other guy who tried to riz up women using Warhammer. What is this? Is this common now? I love this. I love this for you guys. Well, well done. Well done for trying to, to win women's hearts with Warhammer. Turns out she's colorblind and married though. Ble bless her. She probably had no idea what you were trying to do. That's very sweet though. <laughs> The last time I got severely drunk I came to Warhammer World very hungover and I believe it was you who sold me the tickets for the exhibition. You must have been drunk because that wasn't me. <laughs> That wasn't me. It was probably Emma who worked in the shop. We both wear eyeliner and people get us confused quite a lot. But you must have been like pretty drunk because it wasn't me, my dude. I'm sorry. <laughs> A few years ago, playing at a friend's, I nudged a table and one of my friend's minis dropped off and its weapon broke. To this day, he still thinks his cat did it. Oh no. I think that's okay to keep that one a secret. I'm sure your friend was like, it's fine. Mr. Tibbs always does stuff like that. And, and I guess no one was hurt. I think that one's okay. I think. <laughs> I almost won a 40k tournament by playing an illegal stratagem combo which made the beast boss on Squigasaur basically unkillable and then realised in the semi-finals and tried to throw my game but rolled loads of sixes and still won but felt awful about it. Oh buddy. See this is the difference between people that cheat on purpose and people that accidentally get things wrong because Warhammer is really complicated and sometimes people get things wrong and that's really understandable. I think it's really hard to know what to do in that situation because you would have been panicking and, and good on you for saying you felt awful because it takes a lot not to just cope your way through it and be like well I'm here and I'm about to win so well done for at least admitting that you felt really bad about it and well done for trying to throw your game. I honestly don't know what I'd do in that situation. It's so easy for us sitting here to be like oh we would have told the TOs about it and we would have come clean and it all would have been sunshine and rainbows but it's not that easy when you're doing it so well done for trying to throw your game I'm sure that everybody involved would forgive you if and I'm sure they will forgive you if anyone's watching this and they they kind of know who that person was I'm sure it would be fine but well done for trying to throw your game and well done for confessing thank you very much so speaking of which, it's this next confession. <laughs> Worked at a game store, ran a narrative event, a neckbeard comes out on top, admits later he used weighted dice for a narrative campaign. That's so bad. Who would do that for a narrative campaign? And I know we've used the word neckbeard in like a negative way. So like neckbeards aren't necessarily people with beards on their neck. It's just like, it's like Karen. It's like saying that kind of guy. And that's just such a shame. Using weighted dice in a narrative campaign you should be ashamed shame shame on you neckbeard shame on you for 20 years I thought word bearers was people saying world eaters wrong in some way and I didn't know they were a different legion. I think that's pretty relatable. For 20 years that's quite a long time but um, I used to get the two mixed up all the time when I presented for a games workshop and it was it was my job so you're fine, you're okay, don't worry about it. <laughs> I love this one so much. I can't, okay, 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 I need to stop crying so I can read it. <laughs> I once argued with a guy working at a games workshop store that jean stealers were pronounced Jenner stealers. It lasted about a minute before he gave up and said, yep, Jenner stealers. I was a very special kid. Sorry to anyone working in Games Workshop Chester in the 90s. <laughs> Jenner Steeler. Like, like Jean as in Jeanne Steelers? <laughs> were you trying to be French? I know you were a kid, but I need to know more about the pronunciation of this. Like, how did you get, was it like Jeanne? Like Jeanne Steeler? Like French? Oui, oui, baguette. Bisous. I can't believe that poor staff member conceded and was like, yep. You got me, kid. I guess it's Kylie Jenner Steeler now. <laughs> but um, I may have to call them Jenner Steelers from now on, just for the memes. I prefer Primaris Marines to Firstborns. Not too controversial. Like, 
They're new. Everyone likes the new thing. That's fair enough. Also, beakies are overrated. I don't know what to make of this one. I don't understand it. I'm sorry if this is your confession, but I'm gonna read it. I'm gonna read it out loud and just and just see see what what everyone else thinks of it because I there's one element that I don't understand. Space Wolf players always bullied me because I played Thousand Suns. It was amusing at first, then it grew tiring with their Prospero Burns jokes. Hence why I despise Paw Patrol. You lost me. <laughs> What do you mean, hence why I despise Paw Patrol? Is there- is there a joke I'm missing here? Paw Patrol? It just has dogs in it? Do you just hate all dogs now? Or dogs specifically in media form? And if so, why- why Paw Patrol? Why- <laughs> What's going on? I don't understand! I don't understand! Did it ever happen to you with the fans of a rival faction? Yes, I guess so. Like, if a Harlequin player was like, uh, your orcs are just little mushroom men, I wouldn't, but like, then maybe I'd be a bit like, oh, whatever. But I don't think I would then go, and then I hated clowns. Forever. You know, attack the Space Wolf players, but maybe leave Paw Patrol out of this because there's no pup too small. And that's important, I think. I think it's important that we recognize that. We're gonna finish with what I think is the worst one I've read so far. So let's let's get it over. Let's do it together, gang. We got this. <laughs> During a game of Orcs versus Death Guard, my opponent ordered KFC. He ate whilst playing and slowly coated his army in a layer of oil and secret herbs and spices. He won and as he packed up his Death Guard, he placed each figure in his mouth to degrease and then into his case. Mortarian got a licking too. Oh my my god. I've heard stories, right, of people that are a bit crusty. I'm gonna say crusty with their miniatures where they'll they'll use their hair as flocking and they'll use like their blood for blood effects. But I don't think this I don't think this is there's no there's no artistic end for this. It's just a bit gross. And I guess it's fitting that it was a Death Guard player. Not that I'm stereotyping Death Guard players. I'm sure you all shower and you don't lick grease off your miniatures. Oh my god. How do you, how do you, and it's another one where it's like, how do you recover from that? I don't, I don't even know what to say about that one. I guess don't do that. Don't do, if you're thinking about licking KFC grease off your army, just don't do it. Just have a napkin, have a napkin, have a little, have a little sip yet which has some lemony freshness on it and just don't don't lick grease off your miniatures I don't I don't feel like I have to say that I, I don't think you were gonna do that but if you were gonna do that don't do that that's all I have to say goodbye no I'm back I lied I'm sorry I'm back Okay, well, I think that's enough for today. I think I think we're done. I think we're done here for today. I definitely think I feel closer to you guys as a community. And thank you so much to everyone who sent in your stories and your confessions and your secrets. I really loved reading them. Thank you so much. Except for you, Grease Guy story. You probably shouldn't have told me that for me to read it out loud on the internet. And now we all have to suffer together as a big team while we try and unhear what we just heard. And that's partially my fault so I guess I'm sorry too. <laughs> and again if you like this video and you want me to do this again more regularly please tell me down in the comments section and maybe even confess your own little Warhammer secret so that it can be in another video in the future. But for now I hope you enjoyed the video, thank you for watching and thank you for being rogues. I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Bye bye!